This is how to play Taking Space, a cozy stargazing game designed for the 2024 Board Game Geek Solitaire Competition. In Taking Space, you'll be charting out patterns in the night sky by drawing cards one at a time from your deck, placing them in ways that fulfill a variety of scoring conditions. All of your cards have a time cost, and once you've reached or exceeded your time limit, the current round ends. The higher you score per round, the more rounds you'll have before daybreak. And between rounds, you'll be able to upgrade your play deck by choosing cards to add that uniquely twist the strategies and playing style, from new scoring conditions to rule-breaking effects. And when dawn finally does come, you'll get one final round with double the time limit to create the ultimate final star chart, which determines your final score. At the end of the game, you'll earn trophies that will in turn make future games a little more tricky and even permanently unlock new stargazing items that will grant you very special abilities. So with the overview out of the way, let's get into the nitty gritty of how it actually plays. Taking space is pocket sized. It's just 54 cards. And to help you set up, you're welcome to grab one of those cards, which is the setup reference card. To begin, shuffle the seven starting cards and place them face down beside the play area. This is your play deck. Then shuffle the draft deck, which is the 30 remaining icon cards. Place these face down atop the Dawn card. Then shuffle the events deck, making sure the event cards are rotated to their light blue side before your very first game. Place this deck face down atop the scoring goal card with the round one scoring column visible to the side. And now select your stargazing item. For your very first few games, this will be the vintage spyglass. The other three items will be unlocked across multiple games. Place this atop the Time Tracker card. And finally, flip over the Setup Reminder card and keep this Round Reminder card nearby for reference. So, how do you play? The game plays over a series of rounds and each round is split into five phases. In phase one, you draw an event card and you apply what it says. From round two onwards, you will also reveal the next column of the Scoring Goal card, but for now you skip this since it's round one. For phase two, you draw and place cards from the play deck one at a time until you're at or over the time limit, which is 10, unless there's something that explicitly changes that, such as an event or the last round. Now this is the main phase where so much of the action happens, so I'm gonna take a little bit longer to explain exactly how you play cards and how this phase generally plays out. As I mentioned, you reveal and place cards one at a time. Cards must be placed so that at least one icon edge meets an existing icon edge, or so that icons cover one or more existing icons. Cards cannot be placed if icons are only connected by a corner, nor can they be placed if any existing icons are covered by any other part of the card that's not an icon. For instance, this white void space can't cover up an icon, that would be an illegal placement. If you cannot draw a card because the draw deck is empty, you simply reshuffle the discard to form a new one. After placing a card into the play area, move your stargazing item up the time tracker an amount of spaces equal to the card's time cost. You'll notice that some cards contain scoring conditions, which is always represented by the yellow star icon. For instance, this particular one means that during the scoring phase, you will score one point per green planet in one and only one adjacent contiguous group. And note that scoring happens in the next phase, so you can keep adding to this score as long as you haven't hit the time limit. It's worth taking a moment now to look at what your stargazing item allows you to do. The Vintage Spyglass allows you to place a drawn card in a separate holding area, ignoring its time cost, which allows you to effectively skip a card that you don't wish to play just yet. It also allows you to place a card that's in this hold anytime instead of drawing, so maybe you're just waiting for the right time to play a certain card. Just so you know, there are six types of icons in the game. The three common celestial bodies, the scoring stars, the effect nebula, and the comet the effect of which is written on your chosen stargazing item. And so when you reach or exceed the time limit, it moves on to phase three. Phase three is where you score your objectives, total the hearts from all the scoring conditions in the play area. For instance, this particular layout would score five points. Once you have your total score for the round, trash a number of draft deck cards determined by the scoring goal card. For instance, if I scored four points in the first round, then I would trash two cards from the top of the draft deck. 
And so ideally you want to score high so that you trash less cards, because the more cards you trash, then the quicker you get through this draft deck, which will eventually reveal and trigger the final round. Phase 4 is a really quick cleanup phase, where you'll discard placed play deck cards, and you'll discard the event card, and lastly you'll reset the time tracker card to zero. And just so it's clear, each deck has its own discard pile. Phase 5 is a fun one, it's the upgrade phase. Draw three draft cards from the draft deck. Choose one of these three cards to place atop your play deck, which is now permanently a part of your play deck, and then trash the other two. Additionally, in rounds 3, 6, and 7, if you make it to those rounds, then you can optionally trash one card from your play deck or from your discard pile, and trashing means permanently removing. And just a quick note, to keep your play deck and discard separate, if you do decide to trash from the play deck, or if you ever have a, an effect like an event that makes you look through the play deck, then just be sure to shuffle it afterwards. And then you start a new round, and this will continue until the draft deck is empty. And this might even happen sooner than you plan for. When it is empty, the Dawn card will be revealed, which immediately ends the current round. When this happens, discard the play area and reset the time track as usual, shuffle your discard back into your draw deck, and start the final round with no events and a time limit of 20. And in order to track this, you can flip over the time tracker card, which goes up to 20 on the other side. A little edge case scenario, if you do trigger Dawn during the upgrade phase and you've drawn all three of the cards, you may finish this phase by selecting one. But if you draw two or fewer cards, then you do not finish this phase and you go straight into that final round. And note, if the draft deck comprises two or fewer cards at the start of any round, you may choose to skip to the final round. And so let's talk about the end game and the final round. The final round will end when you're at or over the time limit of 20, or there are no cards left to play. You will score your objectives as usual, and this will determine your final score. You will then get to earn trophies, which is the game's meta currency, and that's determined by the Dawn card, so make sure to read that and figure out how many trophies you earn. For each trophy earned, rotate an event card to its trophy side. This is randomly chosen. For storing and setup for future games, do not rotate any event deck cards. This is how the game saves your earned trophies from game to game, and you can check how many you have at any time by just looking at the tops of the cards. This will also in turn introduce more difficult events for future games. And during the setup of future games, if you have seven or more trophies, all event cards can be rotated back to their light blue side, and you can choose a new stargazing item to unlock. These are really powerful and game-altering. I will let you discover them on your own. Once they are unlocked, they're available for all future games. And that's how you play Taking Space. I hope you enjoy the star charting experience, and feel free to keep an eye on the BGG page where there might be some rules updates and some print and play updates as well. So, thanks for watching!